bless everybody. You know, well, Mona, we were thinking that we weren't going to be able to get on here, but thank you guys for your patience. Appreciate your presence this morning. Um, today is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to be glad and rejoice in it. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue in our word uh, that we've been sharing concerning uh, it's time for discernment this morning. A couple of announcements uh, before we dig into the word. Uh, we do want to um, to let you know tomorrow for our Monday corporate prayer, uh, we will not be having prayer this week. Uh, so uh, enjoy your Monday, your Monday evening. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we're starting a, a new dispensation of teaching on our uh, dispensational teaching on our Wednesday uh, midweek Bible study via Zoom. Uh, that is always good. Individuals get an opportunity to come in, listen, share, and uh, dig in their hearts and uh, what the Lord is sharing with them. So we want to encourage you to uh, be a part of that if it's at all possible. Thank you for the intercessor that have been praying for uh, for my wife and I, for the Baptist Church family, uh, and for just the various things that's happening here in the community. I thank God for you. I appreciate it. Thank God for your continued support. You guys are continuing to financially support the ministry and sometimes throughout this particular stream uh, or uh, service. Uh, some of you may even do it beforehand, I imagine. Uh, and so we're just grateful for that as well uh, with your giving. Uh, we know that uh, we're still functioning in some shape, form, or fashion as the ministry of God and trying to do those things and be there for people uh, to the best degree possible. We're still social distancing and, and honoring the guidelines uh, that have been set. I know many churches have uh, reconvened. The others I've talked with, um, in fact, I'm kind of surprised of the many of the ones that I've shared and talked with that, have, that are still worshiping um, in, in place and not corporately. Uh, so uh, as God begins to release and uh, clear things up as the leadership here, uh, we will relay that information to you. But we want to, first of all, just let you know where our heart is. Our heart is always safety and protection. And uh, just when we sense a release, we will uh, we'll do that. Uh, but as for now, I thank God for your patience and continued uh, faithfulness. And so uh, mask up. Don't let your guard down. Uh, regardless, I know that uh, the other places are doing, and it seems as though we're uh, not as diligent as we were before. I walk through the stores and I, I'm looking and I'm seeing the availability of things that at one point weren't weren't available. And at some point, I mean, at, at least in some part, I think that that is because that uh, people have they're not cleaning wiping down things as they want to or and they're not hoarding those things. So in a sense, that's a good thing. And maybe um, we're not, uh, we're, we're coming to at least a better place. Um, but even with that being said, be diligent. And uh, we're going to do the same. We're continuing praying for the body of Christ, ambassadors particularly for you. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue this message. Um, Let's go ahead and, and, and dive right into it. Uh, we're gonna well, let's we're gonna pray first, of course, and then we will uh, we'll make a confession uh, concerning uh, the word for us, and then we will we will we will continue. Father, I thank you for believers this morning that have uh, got in in your hearts and minds that uh, they want to come and be a part of our broadcast or our stream this morning. You know, it's easy to push it aside during times such as these. But I thank you, Lord, for the people. I thank you for the faithful members. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing uh, in the midst of all of this, Lord, and uh, even making us stronger as believers. You believe that by faith? I thank you, Lord, uh, for the word that will be ministered on today. And I ask God that our hearts, Lord, will be filled with your joy. I pray, Lord, that inspiration and illumination will come forth as the word is being shared. In Jesus' name, everyone says amen and amen again. Uh, now, uh, I believe that at the end of today's word, your mind is going to be renewed. I 
and your faith is going to be increased. And I believe that your walk with Christ is going to be effective. I believe that with all of my heart. Okay, so we're living in the last days. We understand that. Um, many, many people don't necessarily get that, uh, but yet we are. And people don't get it because it's been said for a long time. In fact, it has been a long time. But then when you look at what is transpiring among us, it's hard to look at anything else. Going back to Israel now, it's over, what, 72 years it's been a nation. And that was one of the, the prophetic signs uh, that we would be coming into the, uh, into the dawn of uh, this particular uh, dispensation. And so uh, I believe we're beginning to see the, the birth pains that Jesus Christ talked about in Matthew and 24. And time is getting short, and it's getting shorter uh, as Jesus prepares his return. Uh, and unfortunately, that means that deception and evil is going to increase. And the body of Christ, you and I, we have to be prepared. We need to understand that, uh, that because we see or hear certain things that we're not just to swallow it uh, without testing, without judging that. And, uh, and so because it's close at hand, we need to be diligent. Uh, uh, there's no way out of this one. I gave an example uh, last week, I believe, uh, analogy or what I believe the Lord showed me as far as the Titanic. Um, I won't go back over that, but um, this thing has already been set in course, and God has um, has set the course of these things to uh, to take to to transpire, the events to take place, and that's through His prophetic word, through heaven, through God, uh, not through man. The Word of God, the Bible indicates these things. And so anyone else, anyone that would say anything otherwise, contrary to that, uh, is under deception, okay? In these last days in which we're living, uh, many in the church are going uh, to be caught off guard um, with doctrines that seem as though they're godly, but um, many of them, uh, other believers, Father, uh, is going to find themselves uh, asleep, asleep at the will and not being diligent. Uh, so we're already seeing a lot of this. We're already seeing some of these things uh, progressively begin to get worse. Now, I wish I could I wish I wish could uh, tell you, don't worry, everything is gonna be all okay and, uh, and, and all of that. And um, it's not gonna, you don't have to worry because you're saved. And, and I wish I could tell you that, you know, I'm not, I don't desire to be a preacher or a minister of doom and gloom. And I don't believe this is doom and gloom. I believe it's just truth. And, and, and so we're, we're talking some truths here. And we have to receive them as adults, as mature individuals that are able to take uh, strong meat. Okay? And not even this isn't really strong meat. These are just, these are just some facts uh, from the Word of God. And so it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, that you're saved in these days that we're experiencing. And that's the whole key to this discernment, to this asking the Lord uh, each and every day to, you know, Lord, show me something. Help me to see. Help my spiritual eye to see. Help me to be sensitive, to know, because there's going to be so many things coming at you and already is that is coming at uh, the body of Christ, the world in general, that if we're not on our on our P's and Q's, so to speak, uh, we'll, we'll be deceived. And we don't want deception. We don't want deception to be the thing uh, that makes you falter uh, in life. And so you don't have to be afraid, but I wish I could just tell you that you don't have to worry about it and because God got it and that's, that's for everybody else. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, if you have a, a, a wonderful career. And uh, if your trust is in your job, and if your trust is in your career or your finances, then when the economy is shaken, um, there will be a there's, there's going to be a, a, a hard hit. There's going to be a uh, a shaking in, in that person who has placed themselves, who has placed their trust in finances, who has placed their trust in their uh, in, in in their career or their job. If your, faith, if your faith is in preachers or politicians and not in Christ, uh, when you discover that 
uh, those individuals have not been telling you the full truth, have not been uh, telling you uh, what is going on um, in the world, then you're going to be shaken. Your, your faith is going to be shaken. It's going to take a hit. Uh, if your faith is in your ability, your natural ability, or your gifting, doing things, or the way you do things, and you're exceptional at it, and not in the source of your ability, then God, you know, God Almighty was the source of our strength, was the source of our, our gifting. Uh, when your body can't function no more, and when it's not in a place where it can't do what it, uh, or has the capacity to do what it's been doing uh, any longer, then you're going to be shaken greatly. And so uh, the enemy has been playing a strategic game of chess, while the body of Christ has been playing a friendly game of checkers. And we have, we, have, we have been a law to sleep. Um, and so we have to, we, we have to not um, find ourselves in that sense. And you're talking about an army, you're talking about a, a, a people uh, that are on guard and that is watching and is not taking everything in uh, without checking it, without discerning it. Because these days in which we're living in, uh, is, is, is tough and rude and brutal and it's not for the faint of heart are you here and so you know this thing has been going on for quite some time as I said the enemy has been playing a strategic game of chess you know there's been you know even in the body of Christ with the word of God and the prosperity messages you know that has that, that has hijacked um, it, you know, has been hijacked that message instead of prospering spirit soul and, and body and, uh, you know, uh, what we're doing is that we're, we're, we're lusting uh, for the worldly pleasures, okay? We're lusting for the worldly pleasures of life uh, as proof of being blessed by God or a proof, a proof of being uh, affirmed or fulfilled. And it's caused many preachers and many ministries, uh, gifted young talent, gifted young uh, men and women in the body of Christ to abandon the call of modesty to abandon the call of humility and to begin to seek the, the glitz of the world and the glamour and the fame and uh, the affirmation of people rather than uh, uh, the word of God or the affirmation of God. Uh, the word of faith has been hijacked, that message of, uh, you know, of, of the faith. And it isn't about faith in what Jesus has done for us or what, uh, you know, what the Lord has done uh, provided for us. It has become what I can get, what I can accomplish, what I can do if I believe. And really it's become nothing more than a new age version of the law of attraction, uh, attracting things to ourselves. And that's what the word, the, the faith in the word of God has become over the years. And I'm not talking about just recent. We're talking about decades of, of individuals of these things being continuously poured into us from ministers and books and conferences and those kinds of things and we have lapped it up and we have eaten it and we have taken up we have, we, we have digested it to where uh, we are we, we are we're we're not on guard we're asleep and the message of grace we share this uh, you know extensively in one of the series that we taught the hyper grace but the message of grace has been hijacked and, and it's no longer about the grace or the gift that God gave us uh, to regenerate our souls or to regenerate our spirits or uh, our sinful lives or, or even to help us to maintain our, 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 our um, the course, to maintain our spirituality and to overcome during the course of our Christian walk. Um, but it's caused many to live in sin and to many to think that believing that there is no consequence for their sin that they are, uh, or the lifestyle that they choose. And so that message as well has been hijacked. Every time, I mean, everything in the word of God, every move of the word of God, there's been a counterattack. There's been a hijacking. And then, of course, the new apostolic reformation, uh, which is prevalent, and it is the one uh, area is the one segment of the Christian church that is actually uh, growing and is actually uh, making some inroads in certain areas and in fact across the earth but as we said as a whole Christianity is has been on a decline for decades uh, uh, but 
So, but 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 uh, apostolic reformation and and and, and fivefold ministry teaching, which is uh, which is for the body of Christ and and good for the building up of the of the body, has been hijacked. And it's no longer about building the church or the work of the ministry. Uh, it's no um, about the what God has given to the church and and bringing us into the unity of faith. It's been hijacked. Now it's about the you know if there's a division and it's about um, individuals, many times self-appointed apostles and self-appointed prophets, prophets saying if God said and God said this and if you don't vote for this person then uh, you're cursed and you're uh, you're off and you're all of these things and these are individuals that we look to uh, for guidance in the body of Christ that many look to without discernment you'll listen and you'll lap up and you'll receive and take everything that they say because they have done some good things and that they have said some truthful things but everything has to be examined everything has to be checked everything has to be tested so that nothing gets through See, when you're at a checkpoint at a, at a place, whether it's on the highway or whether it's at a military base, they don't allow anything to come through. Everybody from the top to the bottom has to show their identification and get through. They just don't pass people through. And if you do, and you, if you've traveled and if you've been on TS, with TSA and how you have to go through flight checks and that kind of thing, you know, let's, listen, don't get upset, don't get mad. It's a part of your, yeah, it seems like it's an inconvenience or whatever, but there's a purpose in that, okay? When they pull you to the side and start to examine you and to tell you to take this off and that off and that kind of thing, that's a checkpoint. They're making certain that nothing illegal and that nothing that could bring harm to anybody else is getting through. And so there is no, uh, there should be no option or, 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 or options to whether that is done or not. And it is the same in the body of Christ. It is the same with the word of God. Every word, don't let anything that comes, any prophecy that comes through slip by saying, oh, such a so-and-so is given it, or this guy is given it, or she is given it, so I don't have to check it. Yes, you do. You have to check every word. And the moment it doesn't line up with your spirit, the moment that uh, it, that it doesn't line up with the word of God. It needs to be dismissed. It needs to be put aside. And you cannot go move forward past go or collect $200 until you have done that. Because this is how you're going to be spared. All right. Um, and so there's a lot of division that has come in with the us and the them. And, and that during this time and during this move. And praise God for the, for the, for the, Genuine. Praise God for the true, the genuine apostles, apostles and prophets uh, that God is using in the earth. But even the word of God has told us that there's going to be many false ones that will come. And if we're not careful, even the elect, those that, uh, that should know better will be deceived. And you don't want to be one of those. You don't want to be in those, uh, in, in that category. You know, sometimes I, I imagine, and of course you guys know I've always given analogies and just snippets from uh, different uh, movies that I've seen. And my favorite movie, of course, of all time is The Ten Commandments. And there's a part and there's a segment in that in that movie where I sort of kind of ident identify uh, with Dathan. And Dathan was the one that caused the uproar. And I'm talking about the movie, not the historical account in the Bible because, you know, uh, I'm talking about the movie, but in a, in a point when Moses goes up into the into the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, while they were gone, the people became unrested, and Dathan becomes the leader and encourages the uh, Aaron and those guys to make a golden calf and those things. And uh, Moses, anyway, Moses comes back and he's uh, he's got the tablets, and and Dathan looks at looks at him and says, uh, "We don't have to live by your command." Moses, we're free to do whatever we want to do. And then Moses says, there is no freedom. As he points to the tablets, he said, there is no freedom outside of the law. Nathan responds, whose law, Moses? Did you go up there and carve those tablets to become a prince over us? Sometimes I feel like that when individuals have promoted themselves in positions and um, 
and haven't been vetted prop properly, and then they say that, well, God said this for the body of Christ. And I'm like, who, pro who appointed you, okay? Uh, and it doesn't matter who, who, who supports you or who appointed you. And many times they've appointed themselves, or many times a group of individuals that the like-minded have appointed them. And, uh, and so I examine and I check everything, and you should do the same. And I don't just hear it because of, of a man or woman or God says something, even though it sounds good, and even though it may tickle your ears and sound deep, okay? And uh, sometimes when it sounds too deep, it really needs to be checked. So, so there's so much false teaching that has been slathered um, upon believers today across the body of Christ and across pulpits, across the internet today, uh, that a lot of it is borderline uh, or, in fact, full-blown heresy. Some of the things that we are hearing and some of the things that we've been caught up into and, and because all because of someone is saying the prophet of God told them in a dream or the prophet of God took them up into the third heaven and the prophet of God. See, when, when, when Moses was taken up and was in the presence of God, when he came away from the presence of God, he didn't realize it, but the people saw that he had been in the presence of God because the scripture says that his face radiated. I'm wondering how many of these individuals that's been in the presence of God that has been taken up to the third heaven and have had this audience and have had the Lord show them things that they're to, supposedly to come back and to tell us. And I'm not saying that those occasions have not occurred. What I'm saying is that when you see those types of things and when you hear those types of things, you would expect something different in that individual that has had an encounter like that. Unfortunately, I've never had an encounter like that. I've never been taken up into a place of heavenly and been shown something that I've been given an assignment that you go and share this with the rest of the people. For those that have, praise the Lord, in fact, they're a little envious that I never have. But I also judge and I also check and I also test, you know, because if you tell me that, then I need to see some type of fruit in your life. I don't think you can have an experience like that and then still be a racist. I don't think you can have an experience like that or be insensitive. I don't think you can have an experience like that and still not love people and still not care for people. I don't think you can have an experience like that and still spew lies and division. I don't think you can have an experience with the Lord. And you've gone up and I've read some of these testimonies and I've seen many uh, when people will send me and sometimes I will look at different individuals uh, and follow their ministry because I'm sort of, I don't have a degree, of course, in apologetics, but I'm sort of uh, an apologetic individual. I want to know why people teach what they teach and the root of it and the root cause of it. And that's just the way the Lord has, has made me. And so I understand uh, that we have these spiritual experiences, but we have to be mindful in these last days because if we can't stop it, the Lord has already said, this is what's happening. It's coming. All right. So we can't stop it. But what we can do is like the Titanic, we can save people from falling into that, into that icy water. We can throw a life ring, which we're doing here. We can throw a life ring. We can have a lifeboat and we can spare you from the, from the deception that is taking place. This dangerous spiritual warfare that has done more cause uh, because of uh, because of overzealousness and not really understanding uh, the word of God and real, true spiritual warfare. And then oftentimes it has summoned more devils than, uh, than those that have been expelled. There's a case of individuals, if you read there, uh, countless of individuals that have left the church and they're gone uh, because of church abuse and church hurt, deliverance sessions gone terribly bad. And those individuals are now scarred for life uh, that happened in the body of Christ because there was no discernment and no one checked and, and put things in proper perspective or order. And so there's been cases of individuals that have abandoned sound doctrine, churches have abandoned sound doctrine and teachings uh, that have been the staple of the church for years, uh, running after uh, 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 new things that are taking place and new phenomena that is happening because we are living in that time where the enemy is, is, is putting out these uh, 
these smoke screens and these and these totally coming against the body of Christ. Those that are gullible, those that are seeking uh, the Lord, those that have a sincere desire to have a spiritual encounter or uh, 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 or the Holy Spirit to do something great in them. And that's a noble and honorable thing. And we should seek that with all of our heart. But you have to seek it with the right heart, with the right intent. And you have to make certain that when you're doing those things, that you have a covering around you of individuals that can come around you and to lift you up and to comfort you and to guide you and to lead you with wisdom. Are you here? So don't go running off and, and you're listening to all of these individuals that have their blogs and and, and podcasts and YouTube and, and all of those things. Praise the Lord for that technology and for the ability of the word of God to go out uh, like never before. But with that comes great responsibility. And, and so and there's no checking and there's no all of the dreams and what the Lord has said here and there. There's no checking those individuals. Anybody can get a micro, a, a camera, a telephone and a smartphone and start recording something. And I'm not saying that those individuals haven't been uh, ordained and ordered of God. I'm saying many of them I know have it. And you won't know if without discernment and unless it is checked. That's why we teach the way we do. And that's why we're pounding this in you because I believe that we're at that point in time to where we're going to start uh, even having an increase in the types of uh, phenomena and deceptions uh, that is coming, uh, that has been rampant, but it's going to be ramped up. Uh, I said uh, last week we would touch a little bit on some uh, the politics concerning the Seven Mountain uh, Mandate. Okay, uh, I won't go back over those. Uh, you can, they're, they're, they're still up on uh, previous uh, streams from last week, the week before, as far as these seven mountains and these seven spheres of influence. Um, and the one thing I said that I found troubling is that there's not a whole bunch of scripture uh, to support this belief. And, uh, and then there's also the whole idea of the lack of uh, the testing of spirit. Um, but I believe that one of the ways that the church get uh, infiltrated is through uh, the marriage of the church, the marriage of church, Christianity, and politics. Okay, uh, and this is what this is in line with the Seven Mountain Mandate. Now, politics is simply uh, empowering or, or, or employing the power to achieve a certain desire to a, or to achieve a certain end. Okay, employing influence or power. That's really what. Uh, politics is. Now, in a sense, the church is a political entity all in of itself, if we look at it in that manner. It's its own, we have our own employing power to achieve uh, a certain end. Luke 24 and 45 says, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So there's a there's there's to, to employ power to solicit okay uh, a certain end to achieve a certain end okay and of course uh, the Lord gives us power to achieve a certain end that's to change people that's to get people saved that's to demonstrate the love of Christ so in that sense the church itself uh, is a political um, entity but see God's politic. And not about legislating of good in a better way uh, or by voting uh, godly or ungodly people in political positions. That's not how God operates. Uh, but he operates in his church, his people, in living and demonstrating such a remarkable life that, 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 you know, that, uh, that compels others to be brought in. It's a, it's a demonstration of how we live our life. All right, with the power, and, and of course, come what comes with that is just not word only, but with power and with demonstration. We know that the enemy is going to counterfeit that, so we're never going to throw out the things that God has given to the church, the prophetic word, the dreams, the visions, the things that we're supposed to have that's going to uh, allow us to live such a life that others want to come and be a part of. All right, we just, and this is why the discernment is important, because the enemy is going to counterfeit that. He's going to hijack every good thing that the Lord has. Now, when the Romans, when they occupied 
in Jerusalem in that region at that time. They, 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 they believed that people could worship who, however they wanted to worship as long as they included uh, the, the Roman culture involved in that. As long as they included, uh, you know, the acknowledgement of Caesar and, and those types of things. Right? And so when the early church did not do that, that's the reason that they were persecuted, okay? They, when they weren't a part of the culture, when they weren't a part of the worshiping the way the Greeks did it or the way the Romans did it, they were looked at as different. But understand, that difference did not prevent them from growing. It wasn't that they got involved in the Roman system, that they got involved in their politics, that they got involved in their, uh, in their worship styles and, and that kind of thing. It was because they, they, they stayed away and they were obscured from those things of the reason that the, uh, that the, the, the attacks you know, came against them. Okay, and so now uh, Dominion, Ism, dominion teaching, dominion theology, seven mountain, uh, these seven so societal spheres of evangelism, uh, the way would, would have us to think that things all of a sudden get easier because we have these prophets and these leaders in every sphere of society. And so it's going to make evangelism easier. Now, I'm not so certain uh, that that's true or not. It seems on the surface that it would be uh, easier to, to witness if, uh, if you didn't have to worry about whether you were gonna get locked up or not. But the point is, is that it didn't affect the early church from growing because it wasn't about what man uh, was doing, it was about what God was doing, okay? And when our focus is not on man and it's not on God and, it, and it's God's way of doing things, then what seems to be unreasonable, it becomes, or impossible, becomes possible. All right, so you're different than everybody, and you're saying that you're not going to worship this way, and you're not going to do things that way because you serve a different, you do serve a higher power, you serve God Almighty, you don't serve Caesar, and you're not at his beck and call. It seems like that that would prevent people from wanting to be a part of that. But glory to God, it did. People... The, the, the church grew exponentially. It just, you know, because of the, uh, of the people stayed true to faith. Okay, and we know that the church thrived because it, not because of favorable rules and legislation that were put in place by people that had favor. It thrived because God grew the church because the church was about God's business, not man's. Are you listening? Jesus trained up 12 men, 12 disciples. Told them to go out and preach the gospel, preach the word of God, which they did. And they did it effectively. They gave up everything they had, left homes, families, children. And most of them died horrible death. They gave up something, it cost them something. Christianity is going to cost us something. It's not going to be easy. We've had it easy here in the Western world. And we think it's okay to throw a few dollars here and there and never have to go and be in those places ourselves. I know that there's a lot of individuals that travel and go to countries and all of that kind of stuff, but when they go, they stay in five-star, four-star hotels. They're not in, a lot of them are in the thick of things when they go to travel these nations that are being uh, uh, persecuted for their faith. And I don't know, I'm not saying that that type of persecution will come to America. I don't know. It may. The point is, is that uh, where is your faith if it does? I know that we're not going to stay the way we are. I know that it's not going to be as simple as it is, as it has been. I believe that there's coming when there's going to be some questions and some real hard questions for preachers such as myself and others that uh, are we willing if they tell us that you can't preach this particular or you can't say this particular thing. Or you have to marry two men if they come to you. You have to marry two women if they come to you or else it's discrimination. Those types of things are coming and, and, and there's going to have to be some, some reckoning at that point. And those are just surface minor things. I, I believe it gets worse than that, to be honest. 
But we set these things up. The enemy has been setting these things up for some time. And the Lord has already prepared, prepared his plan for us. So um, during, the, during these days and during this time in which we're living, the church has been sidetracked because it has become both compromised and complicit. Okay, so we have this sidetracking. Many congregations um, are white. Uh, some black evangelicals have sold their souls to political parties and uh, have sold their souls, whether it's the Republican Party, there's churches, uh, African-American churches that have sold their soul to the Democratic Party and have become one with them and, and their platform. Now listen, I'm not saying that you should not be a part of the political or the electoral process. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you cannot... You, you, that it, you cannot be, uh, you, in order to join in in that, you have to compromise something. You have to compromise something as a believer because the two diametrically opposing parties in our nation, in our country, okay, uh, and neither one of them stand for God. I want to say that clear. Neither one of them stands for God. I know one of the parties would like would, would like to make you think so, but they don't. And even many in their movements in these political parties are even unaware of the root of their party and of the root of the uh, of the ungodliness that takes place. Definitely nice Christian, nice men, people that you enjoy being around, and oh, but nice. Don't stop them from being deceived. In fact, Satan likes nice people. Okay, people that are nice are more, are more likely not to judge. They're more likely not to check you. They're more likely not to test the spirit because they're nice. And they don't want to offend you. They don't want to, and so they just take it in. Now, I'm not saying that nice, that everybody that's nice, that's gullible, and, and, and it's, it's easy to hoodwink. I just know that how that's how the enemy operates. Now, when you look at the roots of Dominion teaching, when you look at the roots of Seven Mountain teaching, many of you have probably never heard of R.J. Rush doing it. But let me read something. Now, I'll just I'll go ahead and just, I'll just read it. R.J. Rush doing it was a Calvinist philosopher historian and theologian and widely credited as the father of Christian Reconstructionism. Okay, that's important because Christian Reconstructionism is married with Dominionism. It's the same, basically the same thing. And an inspiration, listen, and an inspiration for the modern Christian homeschool movement. Nothing wrong with that, but he's an inspiration because one of his big talking points was the schools can't educate you, our children, the way that they should. So we should teach our children at home. I have no problem with what the, what the brother is saying there. Um, his followers and critics have argued that his thoughts exerts considerable influence on the Christian right. Now, I won't have time to go and dig all of that, but it's married. His, his thought, ex now listen, his thoughts, these are critics and followers, exert that, believe that his philosophies, his teaching, his belief has a heavy influence on the Christian right. Now, the Christian right are the individuals that basically put the president that we have in office in office, okay? Uh, we, they, they're called the, e the evangelicals. Not, not every uh, church is a, a is a part of that or believe uh, in that particular uh, evangelical movement, but um, 80, 80, 80 some odd percent of the total, 87 percent of evangelical churches uh, are Republican and support uh, the Republican the Republican Party. And I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing. What I'm saying is that. We don't, if, if, if we don't check things, if we just kind of look at things and then we won't know why individuals are moving and things are happening the way they're happening. Okay, now listen, Christian Reconstruction is a fundamentalist, reformed 
theonomic movement that developed under the ideas of R.J. Rushdoon, Greg Bashan, and Gary North. I've got a book by uh, Greg Bashan. Uh, it had an important influence on the Christian right in the United States. In keeping with the cultural mandate, Reconstruction advocate theonomy and the restoration of certain biblical laws said to have con said to have continuing uh, um, applicability. In other words, let's go back to the way God ordained things and run our government that way. Okay. Now, theonomy comes from two words. Theo, meaning God, and nomos, meaning law, God's law. It is a hypothetical Christian form of government in which society is ruled by divine law. Now, this is basically what Seven Mountain Dominionism teaches, that individuals should be in place. You don't have to be everybody, but just the top position of those seven spheres, those seven spheres and those seven mountains, and the church is now mandated to hold those positions so that uh, we can change society through that. And once we change society through that and govern uh, our nation by God's law, then the Lord can come back. Okay? Now, I had some other things I've written here, but I'm not going to, to share those just because we are almost out of time already. Um, but, the, but the movement declined in the 1990s and uh, and, and, and was dead by 2008. Uh, but there are still pockets of it. Of, of talking about, we're talking about reconstruction, the Christian reconstruction. And usually things don't die, it just morphs into something else. And what this is morphed into is dominionism teaching, dominion theology, seven mountain mandate. So we can almost piggyback. Those can kind of, kind of meld together are one and the same. I want to read this some quotes from R.J. Rushdoon. Remember, he has heavy influence for those, and it is unthinkable to imagine that the individuals that, uh, that, that are part of the, the, the decision makers in the back room that everybody don't get to attend, uh, that these individuals have not been influenced or not talked about or had meetings or talked with this individual or at least read his teaching and his philosophy. This is what he says, the state is um, the state is a bankrupt institution. The only alternative to this bankrupt humanistic system is a God-centered government. He says Christianity is completely and radically anti-democratic. It is committed to spiritual, okay? It, it, it is committed to spiritual aristocracy. So he said Christianity is, 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 is committed to spiritual aristocracy. Forget the democratic ways of the way things. Does this, does this come to bear anything with the, what's going on in the country, in our nation, and with all the democratic values and those things are being pushed to the side? And, and you know what? I, you know, no, no uh, what are you talking about? No uh, transference of power and all of these things because one of the leaders, one of the founders says it is committed to spiritual aristocracy uh, because it's it, it, is, it is radically anti-democratic. This is what this brother says. And then he says this, if the white Christians have no regard for the blessings they receive, God is going to give the country to somebody else. Now who do you think would be drawn to a statement like that. If the white Christian who have no, have no regard for the blessings that they receive, now I'm going to show you, you're going to learn some of these and we're not going to finish, but we're going, I'm going to read this to you today. The blessing they receive, God is going to give the country to somebody else. Who do you think that somebody else is? Now, in 1978, he is quoting. Now, these are a series of quotes. R.J. Rushdoom. When you listen to him, you can find his stuff on YouTube and stuff like that. Sounds like a very astute, and he is a very astute man. 
And some of the things that you do, you're going you're to agree with. You're going to be like, amen, 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 if you're a believer. It's not until you start pulling back the layers and get further into some of the teaching. Now, this isn't tried. This isn't hidden either. It's stuff that's just out there. Listen to this. Now, this is going to be a little lengthy. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to read this and then we're going to stop. We're going to be done. And I had a feeling we probably would not get through much today. But I don't want to go after reading this. I don't want to go too much further. And we'll, we'll continue it on next week if I'm allowed. If you allow me to do that. Uh, I intended to have it finished today, but that's just not going to happen. There's a the, uh, the politics in, of guilt and pity. This is what he writes about the politics of guilt and and pity. Now listen. The basic difference between the Irish and the Negro has not been color. It has been character. Mind you, this is the father of the Nominism, Reconstruction Theology, Christian Theology, Seven Mountain Man and the Roots. This is this guy that's been influential in right-wing conservative Christian Christianity in America. So he says, the basic difference between the Irish and the Negro has not been color, it has been character. The Negro demand more aid, i.e. more slavery and slave care and dwell on their suffering. The Irish have instead looked to the present and future and helped shape America. And you wonder why there's this this, 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 uh, this idea that there is no systemic racism. The Irish have instead looked to the present and future and helped shape America. It is a significant difference that cannot be explained altogether by color or environment. The white man is being systematically indoctrinated into believing that he is guilty of enslaving and abusing the Negro. Granted that some Negroes were mistreated as slaves, the fact still remains that nowhere in all of history or in the world today has the Negro been better off. The life expectancy of the Negro increased when he was transported to America. He was not taken from freedom into slavery, but from a vicious slavery to degenerate chiefs to a generally benevolent slavery in the United States. There's not the slightest evidence that any American Negro had ever lived in a free society in Africa. Even the idea did not exist in Africa. The move from Africa to America was a vast increase of freedom from the Negro, for the Negro, materially, spiritually, as well as personally. The Negroes were sold from a harsh slavery into a milder one. Slavery was basic to the African way of life, to the point that slaves were the actual money of the African economy. Elsewhere, gold and silver served as the money. In Africa, it was slaves. The move from Africa to America was a vast increase of freedom for the Negro materially and spiritually. The Irish moved from semi-slavery to Ireland to freedom in America only a few years before the Negro gained emancipation. After a century and a quarter or less, the Irish are, leading, are a leading power in the United States, and the Negroes remain on the lowest strata. The basic difference between the Irish and the Negro has not been color, it's been character. The Negroes demand more aid, more, more slave care, and instead, find themselves in the position that they're in. The Negro moved, the Negro moved from an especially harsh slavery, which included cannibalism, to a milder form. Much is said about the horrors of slave ships, but many, many of which were very bad. But it is important to remember that slaves were valuable cargo and hence property normally were handled with consideration. Men remain feeling guilty, talking about white men, 
for a false sense of guilt has no cure save the truth, and this is not forthcoming. Since the citizens are now guilt-ridden because of their education and political indoctrination, they are more amenable to robbery and even murder. If the white man feels guilty towards the Negro, he is less capable of defending himself against the Negroes who turn into a revolutionary rabble bent on theft and murder. The state finds it easier to rob men when men feel guilty for what they are, for, 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 for what they are and have. And the state drones on and, and, and on and about the needs of the poor and of the nations of the world. R.J. Rush Jr., father of Christian Reconstruction, a proponent of dominionism and heavily influential to the Christian right, the conservative right. And you wonder why we're in the position that we're in. This is not talking about what's in the world. This is talking about what we're dealing with now. This is talking about the church. This is talking about saved people. For instance, if you read many other things as I said earlier, you say, man, praise the Lord, God bless. But as you dig deeper, you start to see these things. You start to read these things. See, so when Seven Mountain Mandate is rooted in rising up to have dominion in these spheres and these things, these, these, these areas in society. They're not talking about every person to be at the top of these mountains. Only a select few whom have the intellect to be at the top of these mountains. Unfortunately, we're not going to finish today. And I didn't really want to end like that. But because we're not going to finish, we're going to stop right there. And we're going to pray. I said that the church has been complicit and the church has been compromised. That it has. It's been deceived. And without teaching, without knowing, and without understanding. Now, now get me, now I'm going to say this too. This, this does not absolve the other side. Because we can talk about that. We only touch on some too. Because there's some, some demonic witchcraftery things going on on the Democratic side as well. Some vile things and we all know about that. So as I'm saying, you have to compromise. There's a compromise when you when we get into the politics of man's politics and not the politics of the church. The politics of the church has nothing, it looks nothing and resembles nothing like man's politics. Remember, we're talking about he, 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 he gave the church, he gave us power. We waited, the men of God and the women of God waited for it to be clothed or endued with power from on high to change things, to change themselves. You know something? It was up. It wasn't just uh, one ethnicity that was up there. It was all ethnic. There was all kinds of tongues that were there. See, and that's what we're talking. About. There was. There's a demonstration in that alone. Now I can. I won't. I can. I can. I can. I can say I'm all with with almost a certainty that we could finish. That we'll finish on this, and we'll move on to a couple other things that I believe in this time and season. The Lord. Uh, wants to have me share uh, with you. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, uh, let's help us, Lord, to just understand. Father, I pray, God, if I said something um, that, was, that was offensive, uh, if it came from an offensive place, Lord, I, I ask, God, that the individuals will hear my heart, Lord, and, and, and not the way they took it, Father. I pray, Lord, that even as uh, the word such as these, Father, is ministered, individuals will have different takes on it. Uh, but Lord, we believe that it's, it's well, we know it's true, Father. Uh, 
it was written and it's just factual. There's nothing uh, made up about it. But uh, your body is the is the entity that is damaged. Father, we pray, Lord, for repentance and forgiveness. We confess that we have not always checked the spirit. We confess, Lord, that we have not always uh, rightfully discerned uh, the truth. We confess, Lord, that we moved in areas, oh Lord, because of, um, you know, we just felt like in our natural sense uh, thing to do, Lord, without uh, checking with our spiritual uh, barometer, Lord. And so, Father, I pray, God, that, that, uh, that you will forgive us. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, move us in a position of strength rather than that of weakness. I pray, Lord, that each and every individual, Father, as you would minister to them uh, this week, Lord, as you would drop into their heart and their spirit, uh, the, the, the mindset, Lord, and, and things, Father, that, that, that you would have them uh, to rehearse and to think about in their own lives. Prejudice and implicit biases, Lord, on uh, from white towards black, from black towards white, from uh, even those that are unsaved, Father, even those that have a, a, a different sexual orientation, how we look at them, Father. We're not saying, Lord, that we have to receive and believe and promote and condone those things, Father, but we ask, Lord, that our hearts, Father, would be uh, in a place, Lord, of love, that our hearts, Father, would not be in a place of, 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 of judgment, Lord, but that we would be loving enough, Father, to speak truth, Lord, with the right motive in our heart, with the right motive in our heart. During this time, Father, we pray, Lord, that we will be kind with our words, that our conversations will be seasoned with grace, Lord. And know it's tough, Father, during this time, Lord, with family and friends, oftentimes co-workers being on opposite sides of this, uh, this, this electoral season that we're in, Lord, and um, being bombarded with, with you know, news and articles and uh, uh, mailings and ads and all of those things, Father. Help us to discern, Father. Help us to be about you. Help us not to hate or despise someone that votes different, someone that thinks different, Lord. On those things, Lord, let us be church. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to love, to forgive. We thank you, Father. We give glory and we give honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we have for you this evening, as I said on uh, this afternoon, I should say. Uh, but as I've shared with you already, there will be no prayer on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so, but Wednesday we'll come together for our for our Zoom Bible study. Please uh, make yourself available for that. Uh, and uh, if you have any needs, make certain that you contact the church so that we can be aware of those, whether it's prayer or anything else. Okay. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to 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 meet you again. Hopefully, if not on Wednesday, then on next Sunday. Invite somebody and to share with somebody. This particular message, if you're bold and brave or bold enough to uh, share with somebody, invite someone next week uh, to come and share. If you were visiting with us today, uh, you just happen to jump in on the stream. Um, I pray that uh, that the Lord has ministered to you. I'll just say that, and um, uh, we're here uh, for uh, for you. Hopefully, at some point, you can come and visit us when we're back to corporate and gathering. But we thank you and appreciate you for your time. With that being said, uh, you go with God, you go with peace, and may the blessings of the Lord shower you holy and completely. We'll see you next time.